Hi, my name is Grace Shalom Hopkins and welcome to another episode of Spin Weekly. Today is episode number two of my Ingle Nook Spin. So we did the first part of the spin, we did the unboxing, we did the prep last week. Now this week we're doing the second part of the spin and then next week we're going to do the plying and the finishing off. But, so before we jump into the second part of the spin, I wanted to talk to you about... <laughs> spinning iconic people's fiber and some of the issues that might go with it. So, I was told multiple times on my quest to get a hold of some Ingle Nook fiber that there are Ingle Nook hoarders. Yes, you heard it from me first. There are people out there who do not spin their Ingle Nook fiber, but instead hold on to it as if it is a badge of honor all by itself sitting in their stash. <laughs> now I'm all good with stash building, right? Like if you genuinely see something you like and you put it in your stash and you have several, that's cool with me. But <laughs> you know that I'm a big fan of actually using your fiber that you enjoy and getting over maybe some of that fear of working with something magical or getting over the fear of messing it up or, you know, there's lots of different reasons why people might not, not spin something. However, <laughs> maybe I'm living in a naive little mushroom top here, but I did not realize that there were people who actually collected highly sought after maker stuff without spinning them just for the social credit of having more stuff. That seems dumb to me. <laughs> so I'm not particularly talking about just Ingle Nook, but I'm talking about anybody who does that to any kind of maker. If there's a maker who does something really beautiful and you know that they're in short demand and they sell out a lot and that there are people who've never even tried their stuff wanting to and setting alarms to try and get it and maybe you have more than you're gonna spin in the foreseeable future, maybe you should sit a couple of those out. Or you could share. You could get them and include them in your fiber share package. Maybe just the hunt of getting this thing is what gets you excited. That's cool, but don't like keep all the booty to yourself. <laughs> share the booty, consensually. Demonetization. <laughs> that got real fast. So, so what I'm saying is if you're collecting stuff from a maker that you really love and you're scared of making it into something or using it, um, you could frame it. Like no joke, if you lay that bat out and then press glass over the top, it's beautiful. It's a lovely art piece. This thing right here is a non-felted fiber art piece, right? Super fun. We're gonna do one for the channel one day. I just haven't, there are super personal projects, but Anyway, right, so <laughs> you don't even have to spin it, right? But do something with it. The makers, they didn't make this thing so that way it could sit in somebody's Tupperware container for the rest of its life. You don't have the courage to do a thing. And if you're getting it because you want the social credit of being an excellent fiber hunter, share it or reassess why that's important to you because in my opinion it's more important to spread the enjoyment amongst our friends and encourage other people and allow makers to make new connections to new people you know there, there's just so much more than hoarding <laughs> like that seems also a really broad definite like broad statement of course there's more in life to hoarding <laughs> You know, it's been a long week. I haven't had much sleep, right? I've been in the car for like eight hours a day every day this week. So, <laughs> that wasn't even stage. All right. So, take my slightly rambly advice to heart and let other people enjoy the ingolnickiness because we all want to enjoy it. <laughs> 
<laughs> so anyway, um, I feel like I could have imparted that point with a lot more eloquence, but but eloquence is not really what you come here to this channel to get. Let's be real. You come here so I can ramble and then take stuff apart in weird ways. <laughs> So let's get to that second part. We, we've checked off the ramble part. Let's move to the take stuff apart in weird ways. Um, so let's look at the spin and I will meet you back on the other side.
Okay, so I thought that was really beautiful. I loved every single second of it. Um, if you're a Patreon person, you heard the voiceover, but it was pretty straightforward. Um, you know, I just spun it like you could see. There was no weird um, behind the scenes prep that you might be confused about without the voiceover. Um, I try to make sure that what you see is either explained before and after, like in my Tour de Fleece video, or you can just see it before your eyes, right? Because <laughs> I want to make all of my techniques accessible to everybody, but if you want that extra little nugget, you could become a Patreon patron. So I am looking forward to showing you how it went at the end. There's a little bit of a plot twist in the plying, but it worked out quite well. And I will see you next time. So if you like this video, hit the like button. If you have thoughts or feelings on fiber hunting and hoarding or the spin itself or anything really that's appropriate and not going to demonetize me, um, <laughs> put it in the comment section down below and I will do my best to respond and reply in a somewhat timely manner. <laughs> No, yeah. So if you like these shenanigans, hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to support the show and you're in the market for a spinning wheel, I am a dealer of Spin Illusion wheels. And you can follow the links down below to snag one of those babies from me, your Spin Illusion wheel midwife. <laughs> And like I mentioned before, Patreon is a great place to support the show as well. This week I have bought, not this week, this month, I have bought groceries three times. That would be too much in one week. Um, with purely show revenue. So you literally feed my family in addition to putting content up here for you guys to enjoy. So I appreciate that, especially as my family is transitioning out of the military, um, which will be happening in the next month. We finally signed the paperwork and we are getting out. My husband is a medical retirement case, I guess. So we're being medically retired and we finally made it through that process. Now we're in the clearing process. So especially this month, <laughs> your funds are going to go towards things like petrol and trailer to hook onto car to put stuff in and that kind of goodness. So really every day I'm thinking of you guys and I'll see you next time. Bye.